Sunday, October 1st, 2023, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at a, a currency scorecard uh, for the fiat currency era and what does that mean? Well, we're going to look at how currencies uh, and gold as well, of course, because gold has been a currency for thousands of years. Yes, it has been demonetized, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that it is. Uh, we're going to look at versus the dollar since August 15th, 1971. And we're going to look at the dollar index as well and why the dollar index that we've had in the last 25 years is not really the same uh, that we had prior to that up until from 1973 when it was created and I'll talk a little bit as well about the gold uh, and silver market manipulation and what I think about it. Before I do, just wanted to uh, let you know that I did go into uh, London yesterday to Mayfair to the Coinex uh, 50th anniversary exhibition, a 50th anniversary of the British Numismatic uh, Trade Association. It was great. There were a lot of people there. Uh, I got there at the opening at 10 o'clock. I, I left uh, after a couple of and a half hours. Uh, so there you go, Coinex. I highly recommend Coinex. Uh, I've been going to these uh, exhibitions for over a decade. I don't go every year. Uh, so I'll just show you one of the things that I bought, a few of the things that I bought. One that I thought was interesting and it, I think I got a good deal. Is a 1891 Carson City uh, Morgan dollar. So here you go. Uh, there you go, Carson City. That used to be a mint there, and I think uh, this is one that is relatively rare. And I got a very good price. And how do I know that? Well, because I, I bought one of these while I was there as well yesterday. The 2024 United States uh, Guidebook of United States Coins. Highly recommend that. You might be able to buy it online. And uh, what else did I buy that I thought would be interesting to show you? Well, I've got here, um, because most people think that dollars are Federal Reserve notes, and they have been for for the, the last decades. But uh, even after the Federal Reserve was created in 1913 and began operating in 1914, uh, the U.S. had what what's called national currency. So uh, this is a National City Bank of New York, $10. And it says, we'll pay to the bearer on demand $10. Uh, and it says that uh, redeemable uh, in lawful money of the United States at the United States Treasury uh, or at the bank of issue. So here you go. And uh, lawful money, they, they say that uh, U.S. government bonds, you know, treasuries. But lawful money is also gold and silver. So I, I assumed you could uh, redeem this for, for gold because it's lawful money. And I don't even think personally that uh, government debt should be lawful money because the Constitution says that only a gold and silver should be really money but anyway that's a different topic uh and i got some silver certificates first one is from 1953 it's a five uh five dollar silver certificate so it says uh silver certificate uh this certifies that there is on deposit in the treasury uh, of the united states of america five dollars in silver payable to the bearer on demand so there you go of course we can't go there <laughs> to the treasury and get the silver anymore and i have uh one uh another silver certificate from 1957 but this is for a dollar so there you go so those were one of the a few of the things that i got so now back to the uh, currency scoreboard and before we do look at this currency scoreboard and, and see which currencies really have done well since August 15th, 1971. I just want to talk a little bit about 
the, the price manipulation of gold and silver. The first thing people will say, well, if gold and silver were manipulated and suppressed, how come the price is going up from $35 an ounce to where we're now above $1,800? we have been above 2000 Well, I, I think the point of suppressing, manipulating, and making uh, gold and silver volatile like they were in the last week is basically to put people off having gold and silver. And why? Well, because gold and silver over the long term are the best monetary reserves to have. But they want, of course, to keep you in the fiat currency bank banking system. So they can't have uh, gold and silver going up in a straight line like it has really <laughs> on average o over the last 50 years. They, they have to keep people uh, scared thinking that gold and silver are speculative and highly risky and they're anything but, of course. And uh, I, I haven't got it here with me, but you can search this. Uh, WikiLeaks published a document from 1974 prior to the U.S. legalizing gold ownership again. And uh, U.S. officials communicated with bullion dealers in London about uh, the event and uh, one of the bullion dealers um, concluded that the creation of a gold futures market was a good thing. It would keep uh, gold, and gold highly speculative and it would probably put people off buying real physical because they use, they would, uh, yeah, trade gold <laughs> like, uh, like a speculative uh, asset, not like a, the bedrock of their savings uh, holdings <laughs> and that's what's been happening and it continues and it puts many people off <laughs> gold and silver and I've known about this pretty much since I started buying gold in 2002 I didn't know right away but I worked in the markets and I could tell that there was something funny going on uh, <laughs> at at always the same time and those times haven't changed during the day and then I learned about it but um, it is frustrating only because we've been conditioned in this fear era to speculate and to trade and I've been victim to that as well so what they've done to gold and silver psychologically is make it like a yeah, a speculative asset. It's almost akin to what to if they created a basket of house prices, and you could actually trade your house if the one they have, you know, up to a point. It's like uh, just because your house price goes up, you're not going to sell it, move out for like a year, and come back to buy it cheaper. It doesn't make sense. So, yeah, of course, you might sell your house eventually. You might exchange some of your gold and silver eventually. So that's how I see it. Hasn't put me off, of course, gold and silver. And I'll show you why, because we're going to look at a historical uh, fiat currency report card or, yeah, uh, currency uh, report card since uh, President Nixon <laughs> uh, detached gold uh, the dollar, sorry, the, the American currency from gold in, on August 15th, 1971. So we're going to start uh, looking at the uh, U.S. dollar versus the Deutschmark. And you might say, what are you talking about? The Deutschmark doesn't exist. Well, the euro has existed since 1998, but the euro was created as a basket of uh, the Deutschmark and all other legacy currencies uh, of the euro and they have a weighting and a fixed rate so you can go back here on fxtop.com and i recommend this website and you can see that uh from august 15th uh, 1971 to the 30th of september 2023 uh, the dollar has dropped 45 percent against the deutsche mark and uh this is where the uh dollar index comes in because the Deutsche Mark had the biggest weighting uh, of the dollar index until the euro was created. And what happened when the euro was created, they added a lot of other currencies that weren't as strong as the Deutsche Mark. So it, it, it diluted 
I would say the Deutschmark. So that's why I'm saying that uh, the dollar index is not really the same as it was prior to 1998. So there you go, the Deutschmark. Um, yeah, the dollar has <laughs> lost almost 50% of its value versus the Deutschmark. Uh, the Swiss franc, that's another currency uh, that the dollar hasn't done well against. Uh, the dollar has dropped 77% uh, against uh, the dollar, uh, the, the Swiss franc, excuse me, since August 15th, 1971. Uh, now we're going to look at uh, the Dutch uh, Netherlands guilder, the Dutch guilder. Uh, so the dollar has lost 40% versus the Dutch guilder since 1971. So it's pretty much matched. Uh, the Deutschmark hasn't done as well. So we're going to look at the, uh, the dollar versus the Japanese yen. And we know the Japanese yen compared to where it was 10 years ago. We got the dollar duck got down to 80. Yes, it's weakened a lot. But um, believe it or not, uh, the dollar has lost 58% of its value versus the Japanese yen. So after the Swiss franc, it's actually the second best performing currency in the fiat era. Uh, now we're going to look at the dollar versus the euro. And this uh, website, this, this uh, program here allows you to look at the euro all the way back to 1971 because the euro, as I said, is a basket of currencies it's a derivative of the uh, legacy currencies so what's the dollar done against the euro in, in the last uh, well since 1971 well the dollar is down nine percent so it shows you uh, versus the euro it shows you why the dollar index is not really uh, since 1998 is not really a true reflection of things because the deutschmark uh gained a lot more versus the dollar in that uh, period. So now to our uh, UK currency here, the, the British pound. How is the dollar done against the British pound? And my UK viewers are going to be uh, shocked with this because it's not good. <laughs> uh, so the dollar's actually gained 97% versus the pound. So when we're told <laughs> that uh, leaving uh, the EU, you know, Brexit has hurt the UK economically, uh, it's rubbish, really, because the, the UK has been inflating and debasing its currency uh, for over 50 years. But let's look at the French franc. Well, the dollar uh, is up 12 percent versus the French franc. So yes, it has outperformed the French franc, but the French franc hasn't done as badly as the pound. So now we'll go to the granddaddy. Uh, well, the winner uh, of the currency contest since August 15th, 1971. And you probably know it by now because you've been following me. Well, the dollar has lost 98% of its value versus gold. And uh, gold here is in grams. So you can almost buy, uh, well, very little now. You, you used to be able to buy about 0.7 of a gram with a dollar back in 71. And now you can buy 0 0.0, let's see, the last one, 0 0.0166. So <laughs> the dollar uh, and all other currencies as well, they've lost a lot versus gold. So there you go. Gold is the winner. It's not the dollar. <laughs> and even amongst the fiat currencies, the dollar has not really been the best performing. Dollar is not king, people. Uh, there are people out there who, who say that the dollar is king, but it's anything but. I, I would say gold is king. And uh, after that, as we've seen, uh, it's the Swiss franc, the Japanese yen, and the Deutschmark. So... I will, be, I will be doing my uh, live stream later on tonight, but with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good rest of the weekend. Take care. Bye.